So AI has come under fire for having political leanings. Yes, we all want to outsource our thinking to a robot, but we want that robot to be neutral. However, AI is trained by people, by people. It has the direct slant of its developers, plus it's trained on the internet, which means it's trained on millions of articles, and those articles are written by people. People are not neutral. The best we can do is to help AI recognize and avoid these biases. That's the best we can do. In this video, we will discuss this Stanford Research Lab model slant, where these researchers at Stanford actually have tested the biases of these major AI models. Which AI was the most biased? Which is the least? The answer might surprise you. It certainly surprised me. And then we will go into the reasons, the actual reasons why AI is politically biased and why that matters, because it does matter. Now, this study came out in May of 2025, and there have been efforts from companies to make corrections, certain companies. These efforts have gone hilariously wrong, and I'm here for it. You know I'm here for it. I'm a little sarcastic like that. I like to joke. Quick, don't look it up. Which AI model do you think the study found to be the most biased and which one do you think was the least? Don't look it up. Now, a research team at Stanford has tested 24 AI models on 30 different topics. 24 models. I didn't even know there were that many models. Now we've got your major models like ChatGPT 4.0 plus three more GPTs, Grok, Claude, Gemini, DeepSeek. They even tested the Alibaba AI. Now that is a good model, but you got to ask questions in bulk or else it's not really worth it. That's a wholesaling joke for those of you who aren't familiar, but we're just going to move on. The team was headed by Andrew Hall, and he is a Stanford professor of political economy who teaches in the Graduate School of Business. Also, Sean Westwood of Dartmouth and Justin Grimmer. He is a political scientist at the Stanford School of Humanities and Sciences. They asked 10,000 people from across the United States, these were Republicans, these were independents, these were Democrats, to evaluate the answers that the models gave on these 30 different topics. And the researchers ran the study through a custom platform with randomized model responses and blinded the participants matching. So that basically means the participants didn't know what answers came from which models. Uh, they didn't know what model they were looking at, just the text itself. Now, this improved reliability, unlike earlier studies, which prompted the AIs themselves. So the users knew. This one was blind. So what did they find? Yes, you may have guessed it. I bet you guessed it. All of the models leaned left. All of them. What about Claude, you say? All of them. What about Grok? All of them. Did I just say all of them? I swear the listening comprehension on this platform is so low. All of them, they all leaned left. And you're probably thinking, but wait a minute, didn't Grok just go through this really embarrassing episode where it got caught being anti-Semitic? Yes, that's true. But that happened after they prompted Grok to not shy away from making claims which are politically incorrect as long as they are well substantiated, among other things. Now, that update came in July. Remember, this study was from May. So those updates may have been, and we know they were, they were to correct its left-leaning biases. Now, maybe you read this NPR article. Patrick Hall, who teaches data ethics and machine learning at George Washington University, said he's not surprised Grok ended up spewing toxic content, given that large language models that power chatbots are initially trained on unfiltered online data. This is his quote. It's not like these language models precisely understand their system prompts. They're still doing the statistical trick of predicting the next word, Hall told NPR. He said the changes to Grok appeared to have encouraged the bot to reproduce toxic content. Not the Twitter bot. I don't believe it. Or the X bot. It's X now. Okay. Now, these models, they are trained on users. And that's how people can actually sabotage AI by introducing nonsense to the internet. Now, of course, people would be putting nonsense on the internet 
regardless but they added additional nonsense to sabotage the AI for the direct purposes of sabotaging the AI. And they can do that by interacting with the AI in racist and sexist and otherwise prejudiced ways. Do you remember, do you remember when Microsoft introduced Tay on Twitter? This happened in 2016. So it was almost 10 years ago now. Ugh. Okay, Tay was this cute little chatbot and she came to the internet all wide-eyed and hopeful or it came to the internet. That was its first mistake. Tay was soon a full-fledged Nazi. This is the first data poisoning incident that I remember witnessing. AI developers had a very public and a very messy lesson with Tay. The internet is full of trolls. That's the lesson. The public cannot be trusted, especially when they know what they are being asked to do. There are some people who want to help humanity by sabotaging AI. Now they are not racist. They're not Nazis. They're genuinely doing it to slow AI's development. Now the term data poisoning is when people introduced nonsense data into AI training so that when the AI goes to look for inputs, for information, they get this stuff that just doesn't make any sense so that their outputs are wrong. The answers they give you are wrong. Obviously, some of this is malicious, like with Tay, but some of it is benevolent as well. It depends on the motivations of the person. Now, cut to earlier in 2025, which may as well have been 10 years ago in AI terms. <laughs> like, we're living in dog years now. Dog years on steroids with the way AI is growing faster and faster. It's growing faster than weeds. So cut to 2025, and these researchers from Stanford decide, decide to test the political biases of these AI models. And they all leaned left. I'm going to link this article at the bottom so you can see. Which AI leaned the most left? Yep, you guessed it, open AI. Yes, my girl chat was the biggest liberal cuck of the bunch. But I bet, I bet you didn't guess which one was the next one up. The next one was Grok. Well, obviously Elon was not happy about that and decided to make these changes, which we already discussed, not necessarily in response to this study, but in general. And those changes did not work out unless you're here for entertainment, which I kind of am, so. OpenAI acknowledged their left-leaning tendencies and they said they were constantly improving their software. You see how OpenAI did not freak out and create an international incident? Know thyself, know thyself. OpenAI knows itself and it was just like, look, we're working on it, lay off. We're doing our best. But guess which AI was the least biased? It was Google. That only had a 29% perceived left-leaning bias in Gemini's answers. Now, Republicans could still spot the bias, but Democrats thought that Google's AI was neutral with absolutely no bias. And of course, <laughs> if biased people say that it's neutral, then it's biased toward their side. It's biased in their favor. But those de same Democrats were able to spot the bias in other models. So that's how extreme the bias actually was across the board. And that is funny because do you remember Gemini's absolutely disastrous rollout? Do you remember that? Basically, if you aren't online all the time, Google debuted Gemini and it was an absolute woke mess. When you asked it to show you, let's say historically accurate pictures of Vikings, it gave you boys to men with horns on their head with you know, those Viking horns. They had to apologize and make a lot of updates. It was, it was pretty bad. You know I'm online for the laugh, so I loved it. And even Twitter had a big laugh about it, but it really showed people just how biased this AI could potentially be. Nevertheless, by May of 2025, Google was the least biased AI model. Okay, so you say, well, I'm a Democrat. I can trust Google. What is the problem here? Of course, this is a hypothetical comment. This isn't a real person. Don't jump down my throat in the comment section. So you're just like, what is the problem here? I don't care. Well... Republicans or right-leaning people, they're not going to use technology if they think it's trying to influence their opinions. And maybe it is trying to influence them. The AI, have you noticed, that is the first thing that pops up when you Google something now. Now Google, we don't want to go into it, but was already biased before with its rankings of what came to the top, what pages were hidden, et cetera, et cetera. And who decides what comes to the top of a Google, of a Google search? It's Google. 
Now you add AI into that, you have an AI summary and people just take the summary and they're too busy and they just move on. So Google can tell you whatever, or that AI can tell you whatever. And those Republicans, they are craftier than we give them credit for. They saw the bias and they were like, you know, I'm good. I don't need to use this technology. Why would I use this technology if you're gonna try to bias me? Well, how are we gonna influence them if they won't use the technology? Google figured it out. They're like, okay, let's make it more neutral. And basically the people from the study, they were like, I'll use it. I just wanna use bias tech. However, we saw what happened when Grok tried to unbias the tech. There are some legitimate reasons why AI leans left and it's not some grand lizard people conspiracy to turn the kids trance. I mean, that might be the long game, but not right now, not right now. That's, <laughs> that's in the future. So why does the AI lean left? Well, there are a few reasons for it actually, and they make sense. And I asked the AI models, hey, what's up with that AI models? And I was like, hey, what's up with that? Now, ChatGPT, I asked, why do your answers lean left politically? And I'm gonna paraphrase because you know chat gets really chatty. It said that there is training data bias, it's trained on the internet and news and academic articles, and those also tend to lean left. It also pointed out that it is safer, safer, safer to lean left because it doesn't want to incite violence or spread misinformation, which tend to happen on the far right. It's words, not mine. Also, it is sensitive to corporate risk aversion and our corporations have rules of conduct and the last thing open AI needs is to have those very same headlines that Grok just had. But, and this is important, you can train your particular chat GPT to be more balanced by telling it, and this is what chat said, give me a conservative, libertarian, or centrist perspective on this, and to ask for historical context or counter arguments or to steal man, to steal man. Now that part is important. It said, important, I don't actually have opinions. I don't believe in anything. I generate patterns based on probabilities. When you push for context, nuance, or alternative views, I can provide them. I'm designed to give you what you ask for, not push a personal agenda. Now it ended by saying, I sound left sometimes because of how I'm trained and filtered, not because I have political opinions. You can absolutely push me to break out of that and give multiple sides. You're in control. So that's the article. Yes, AI leans politically left. It just does. And when they try to remedy that, like we saw with Grok, it goes very, very wrong, or it has so far. Now, what do you think? Can we ever get truly unbiased AI across the board? Are you reluctant to use AI because of its political leanings? You let me know in the comments. There are actually no wrong answers here. We are all, all of us coming to terms with these rapid changes in society and we all have the right to have an opinion on this. Thank you and I will see you next week.